Okay, uh, welcome back. So this is the fourth time I've recorded this video, so I'm sorry it's coming a little bit late. Um, had a couple issues with my capture program, and then I did the whole video once without <laughs> recording it. So here we go. Hopefully this time will actually work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the art that I made in the previous video, which will be up on my channel right now, this uh, ring here. So I'm going to bring that into my art folder. I'm going to resize it so it's the same pixels per unit as my dot. So my dot was 768. I'll make the ring 768 as well. Uh, make sure it's set as a sprite, and I'll hit apply. Now, I'm going to need to make a couple materials here. So in my assets folder, I'm going to right click, choose create, and I'm going to create a material. Or sorry, yeah, oh, it'll be fine. We'll do it in here. So I'm just going to call this first one dot material. I'm going to create another one. So I will duplicate that uh, using either Control D or Command D on a Mac, and I'm going to call this ring material. Okay, so if I take a look at the ring material here, um, I want to change it from standard shader to particles, and I'll do alpha blended. This requires a texture, which is just a 2D um, image. So I'm just going to bring in, yeah, I'm on the ring. So I'm going to bring in the ring. I'm going to change the color to be white and the alpha to be full. Uh, okay, and now I'm going to go look at my dot material. Change that to be particles, alpha blended, and this needs my dot image. And I'm going to change the color to be white and opacity to full. Uh, okay, cool. So I got my two materials here. Now, might as well make a folder for that. So I'm going to create a new folder, call the folder materials, and I'll drag in my, oops, didn't want to do that. I put it in my prefabs. Um, I'm going to put my dot material in my materials folder, my ring material in my materials folder. Cool. Now I'm going to take a look at my scene here. I'm just going to kind of squinch down my game view. I'm going to go to create, effects, and a particle system. So a particle system, by default, just makes these kind of soft-looking things. Uh, I'm going to make a bunch of changes here. So I'm going to change the duration down to something nice and short like 1. And I'm going to change the start lifetime to uh, 1 as well. This makes them last much shorter. I'm going to change their uh, start speed to 0, which makes them all kind of appear like that. And I'm going to change or turn off shape. So now it's just one dot. And I'm going to change emission down to 1. So I'm getting 1 dot per second. All right. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to add that material to it. So I'm going to go to my materials and just add my dot material to this one. Oops, maybe. Try this way. There we go. All right, so we got our dot. Now let's change a few different things. Let's change the start size to be... Uh, something small like 0.2 and then we're going to make the size over lifetime I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to use this graph to change it so I've got this curve here I want this to go up to 2 so I'm going to change that right there I'll pull the end down and then I'll right click in the center to create a new key and drag that key all the way up so it's kind of fading in and out. Um, let's change this to maybe before. Okay, that's looking better. All right, so that's the first part of the particle effect we're gonna do. So what I wanna do now is I'm going to duplicate this into another particle system. And this particle system, instead of using the dot material, is gonna use the ring material and instead of going out, it's going to start big. So I'll set my start size to be like 1.5. And then this one's size over lifetime. I'm going to have it to the opposite. So I'm going to bring the edge up, edge up, and then middle down. And I'm going to change the max on this from 4 to, let's go with 1.
and then again double click to make a new key and drag it down so these two are going to be working in opposite directions I'm going to have the big one um, starting small getting big going small and this one's going to start big go small get big again uh, okay I'm going to rename these I'll call it uh, dot explosion and then I'll call this next one ring explosion so ring explosion uh, okay so now I'm gonna create an empty game object to hold both of these and I'm gonna call this uh, destroy effect and then I'm just gonna drag my dot explosion and my ring explosion to both be part of that uh, now I'm gonna go to my prefabs I'm gonna pull my destroy effect into my prefabs once I do that you'll see this one turn blue so I can just destroy that from the scene okay so now let's take a look at the script that is destroying the objects which is the board script so let's go ahead and open that up um, since I've already done this I have empty spaces where these should go but I'm gonna take a look at the uh, global variables or actually I don't on this one okay I'm gonna look at my global variables and I'm gonna make a new public game object and I'm gonna call this uh, public game object and no array on this because it's just one object uh, we'll call this destroy effect then where I'm actually destroying the dots themselves here oops your script might look slightly different than this and that's okay I had to um, change to an earlier version because my other project got corrupted so your I forget if our script looks different from this like we might have you might not just be using that line right there so if your script looks different it's okay don't change anything leave it alone um, just find your destroy matches at in your board class and then before we destroy all dots column row what we want to do is we want to instantiate uh, should be over there um, and what we want to instantiate is the destroy effect and where we want to instantiate it at is all dots column row dot transform dot position and then the rotation is going to be quaternion dot identity okay cool so I'm going to save that I don't know why this keeps wanting to oh it's because everything else is indented improperly I think oops no sometimes sometimes there actually <laughs> it would just be smarter to do this I'm dumb sometimes um, an indent and then indent the bad line there we go all right so I'm gonna save my script I'm gonna pop back into unity I'm going to find the board class and um, <laughs> So on here, I have a new destroy effect. Again, yours might look slightly different than this. Um, I had to revert to an, a different version that I was making of this. So don't freak out if yours doesn't look exactly the same. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna put my prefabs, my destroy effect in for there. And yeah, let's try this out. So I'm gonna hit play. Um, I'm gonna make my play area large enough that I can actually use it. And let's make a match. Okay, so our destroy effect got created, but it's now going on for forever. It's looping. So let's go to our prefabs. Let's find the destroy effect. And on both of these particle systems, there's a little box that says looping. I'm going to uncheck that. Uh, okay, now let's give it a try. And hit play. And pieces are going to fall in and make a match hmm why is it doing that okay let me find out what's going on and I'll be right back okay uh, so here's what the issue was and I don't know why I didn't think of it so if I pull my destroy effect into the scene 
Um, I'm going to open up my two particles here just so I can make some changes to them. You can make changes right from here. Uh, instead of having their emission be set to 1, I'm going to set their emission to 0 and instead I'm going to use a burst. So here where it says bursts under the emission tab I'm going to add a new one by hitting the plus button and I'm going to change my count to uh, 1. Now if I select my dot explosion and hit play and there we go. I'm going to do the same thing to my ring explosion. I'm going to go emission, change the rate over time to 0. I'm going to add a burst and that burst is going to be 1. So now if I hit play, there we go. Alright, now I'm going to go up to destroy effect and because I made a change to the prefab, I'm going to hit apply. Otherwise, any changes I make here won't affect that one. So I'll just delete this from the hierarchy. Go ahead and hit play and make my play space big enough I can actually use it. I'll make a match. And there we got our little effects. Um, you can tweak and tone these like however you want to. You might not actually like the way this looks. I think it looks kind of cool. It's probably a little too long. Uh, let's make it like, uh, like 0.5 seconds for both the duration and the lifetime. And let's do that for both the dot and the ring. Now since I'm changing these inside the prefab folder, I don't have to click apply. It'll automatically apply. Uh, now I'll hit play. And pieces slide in. And I'm going to swap. That's a little better. You might want to make it even shorter than that. It's just enough to get a feedback. If you put a nice sound with that, it would be especially satisfying. Now, you might notice that there's an issue with this. So right now, if we take a look at our uh, scene view, every place that we've already instantiated a particle, that particle is still there. And it's taking up memory because Unity has to keep track of it and whether or not it's not playing. So what we want to do is we want to destroy them after a small amount of time. Now we could create a script that counts down time and at the end of that countdown destroys the object. However, we don't need to do it that way. Instead, uh, if we go back into our board script here, right after we instantiate, um, instead of instantiating it this way, I'm going to instantiate it as a game object. So I'm going to say game object particle is equal to instantiate, destroy effect, and all that stuff. And then before I destroy the other dot, I'm going to do destroy. Uh, I want to destroy particle. And you can put in a time for how long you want that to happen. And it can be a float. So since my particle system lasts half a second, I'm going to do 0.5f. Uh, I'm using a magic number here. You might want to have like a particle destruction delay float created up in your global variables and then pass that value in here. Um, so what I'm doing is a little bit messy, but you get the idea. All right, so I'm going to save my script. Don't worry about that weird error I have down there. I'm trying out Unity's 2018.1 beta, and so far it's worked really well. I want to try out the shader graphs, and it's been good so far. It's fun to play around with. Anyway, so I'm going to hit play now. Um, my pieces will fall in. Uh, let's make a match here. And then if you'll notice, in my scene view, they're no longer still there. So they just kind of destroy themselves right away. Cool. So, um, particle effects. Next time, we're going to talk about making uh, column and row bombs and how those are going to affect the scene. And then after that, we'll talk about how to create them properly when we have a match of four. Um, that's why we did that list system to count how many matches we had at a time. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the uh, comments down below. Um, you can follow me on Twitter to know exactly when I post a new video. Uh, other than that, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And yeah, have a good day.